One of the greatest things about being a student in the 21st century is the wide range of resources we can get access to. Since starting university, I've integrated the use of my iPad into almost every aspect of my studies. This is how the iPad has completely transformed my learning experience. So about a year ago, there were a bunch of challenge videos circulating around YouTube titled, Anything You Can Carry, I'll Buy It. Now, I know you're probably thinking, Alicia, what the heck, this has nothing to do with how you use your iPad at the university. But just bear with me for one second. So these videos were exactly what the title said. Someone walked into a store, they had a time limit and they could basically grab anything off the shelves and if they could carry it without dropping anything, then the other person would pay for it. Imagine the products in the store are sort of like the content, the knowledge you wanna be able to retain in your brain for that final exam so you can do well and your lecturer can give you that mark that you want. Now, obviously, if you use your two hands, you could probably still pick up a decent amount of things, but just imagine if you had something to help you do that way more effectively and allow you to grab way more content, retain way more knowledge in your brain. And that, my friends, is what a trolley is for. And yes, here's that really bad link. The iPad is kind of like the trolley of all trolleys for students. Literally an all-in-one tool that can ride you on your way to success. Never before have we really had a tool that can carry you through every step of the learning process from your first encounter with the content to your final exam revision. When I go to my classes at uni, all I really bring is my iPad. Ain't nobody got the back strength to carry like a million books and binders and textbooks all around campus. I used to carry my binder notebook along with my laptop to every single class, just because if I needed to draw something, I had a notebook there. And if I need to search something up, then I would obviously use my laptop. That was before I got an iPad. I know a lot of people use laptops and stuff, but I find the greatest limiting factor of a laptop is that you can't draw on it. A lot of the subjects I do, drawing really helps me to picture a concept and be able to draw different links from different areas of the topic in my head. And you can't really draw on a laptop unless you like tried that little Microsoft draw tool, which I can never use because the trackpad's just way too hard to control. But with the iPad, I can use this handy little Apple pencil and draw out my diagrams, draw out a concept and make things flow in my head, viewing the topic from a different perspective. It's basically a fully functioning binder system, everything that you will ever need for university on this one device. It's not scattered everywhere. You, your mind's sort of not jumbled as to where certain things are. You can store your notes, your slides, your resources, your flashcards, everything on this iPad. So this here is my iPad. For those of you asking, I have an 11 inch iPad Pro and it's not the 2021, but the one that came out before that. The case is the Smartfolio keyboard from Apple and the screen protector I have on my iPad is the current paper-like screen protector. This video is sponsored by them, so I'd just like to give a quick shout out and thank them for supporting my channel and also creating such an awesome product. I literally swear by this screen protector. If you've watched some of my other videos, I talk about it all the time. Honestly, I think sometimes I rave about it a bit too much, but it's literally changed the way I use my iPad. Like I, as you probably have guessed, am a very big drawer. Like I'll draw a lot of diagrams in my notes and different structures. Like it really helps me with anatomy and physiology subjects like that. Using this screen protector, when I draw, it's like I'm literally just using paper and writing on a notebook. It doesn't feel like glass. There's no sort of like friction that you get from writing straight on the iPad screen. I write a lot of my lecture notes in the lecture itself. And I find with the screen protector, I can write a lot faster because it comes naturally to me to like write on paper. So it sort of saves me in that aspect and it helps me to be a lot more efficient with the way that I'm writing my notes on my iPad. If you want to check it out, along with every other item I mentioned in this video, all the links will be in the description or you can check it out on paperlike.com slash study collab one and you can check out all the features of the screen protector but yes that's basically everything to do with the ipad itself so now i thought it would be a good idea to walk through each stage of the learning process and show how i use my ipad in each of them the first stage would be encountering new content 
Just like learning a new skill, you always want to start with the basics. So when encountering new content, I always try and start with the lecture notes as my first resort. I find the lecture will often deliver the content in a way that's easy to follow compared to something like a textbook or just Googling about the topic. So if you've seen any of my other videos, you probably would have guessed my most frequently used app on my iPad is GoodNotes. I step into the lecture theatre and directly import the slides from my uni website, so my uni uses Canvas, and I can use it to annotate the slides or I will sometimes write my lecture notes then and there. I found with annotating the slides, I spent more time critically thinking about what the lecturer was saying rather than trying to scribe everything that came out of their mouth. In most of my lectures, the lecturer will highlight key points from the slides. You can recognize that they focus a lot of their attention on certain points and that sort of highlights what's the most important. Or more often than you think, they'll put up like an image and then just start describing that image with like no words on the slide. So in that case, annotating it really helps. So through GoodNotes, I will either use the highlight tool to pick out key points or I will circle things, annotate, scribble all over the slides in a way that makes sense to me when I come back to revise or if I'm trying to write summary notes and pick out the key points. Those annotations really help to remember what the lecturer was saying and what they were focusing a lot of their attention on. It's also really cool because you can flag certain pages of the slides. So if you're coming back to revise and you remember there's a concept you don't really understand, that'll be flagged in your notes and you can go and watch videos, do whatever you need to do to get a better grasp of the topic. So after my first encounter with the content through the lecture slides, the next step is probably the biggest and the longest step in the learning process, which is understanding the content. Now, don't get me wrong, trying to understand the content and fully grasp the details of a topic is quite a difficult process. I will explore a wide array of resources, whether it's different websites, articles, YouTube videos, or the textbook, and then try and organize all my thoughts onto a notebook on GoodNotes. In the semester of uni that just passed for me, I took a histology subject. For those of you who don't know, histology is kind of like the study of tissues, looking at different cells and structures of the tissues under a microscope. What I did for this subject was create a prac identification book. I scoped each topic and picked out the key structures that were highlighted in the lectures for me to sit down and learn. In this process, I wanted to come out of it being able to logically reason things. By this, I mean not just straight memorizing, but really understanding why certain structures were there. Was it related to its function or perhaps its location in the body? You always wanna be asking yourself, but why? To do this, I had to do some thorough research, taking pictures from different uni websites, looking at different apps, going through the textbook, and putting all the relevant information into one central location on GoodNotes that made it easy to find and follow. Apart from collating the notes and looking at different websites, there were also heaps of apps that you can download onto your iPad that can really help you in this process. One in particular that I used last year was this 3D Human Anatomy Atlas. It presented the information in a way that no textbook could. You could zoom into different structures, rotate around the body, and spatially visualize the connections between each anatomical structure. This is just one example of an added resource that I downloaded onto my iPad that really enhanced my learning experience. Now onto the final stage, which is revising all of this content when it comes closer to the exam. Other things on the iPad that have really helped me to enhance my learning process and engaging with the content have been Notion and Anki. When it comes to final exam revision, being able to test myself and carry out active forms of revision are really helpful. The main thing I do on these apps is create digital flashcards that allow me to practice recalling concepts, identifying structures, and also explaining different concepts back to myself given a prompt. If you want a more in-depth explanation of how I actually create the workspace and different flashcards, then you can check out the separate videos on my channel as they go into a lot more detail. Another way you can test yourself is also just on GoodNotes. What I do is I will duplicate pages of questions that maybe we get given in lectures or perhaps images we get given in our pracs. 
Then what I'll do is take the eraser tool and just rub out all the writing. And then I can reuse those questions to retest myself. And then to test myself on the prac images, I just put them into a PDF and jumbled all the pages. So I wasn't really given any prompts. And then I would try and identify the structures and also the tissue and any other relevant information from memory. That was a little overview of each step of the learning process and how I integrate the use of my iPad. As you can see, everything is condensed into one device. Your notes are on there, you can access the textbook, different websites, and you can also even attend your Zoom meetings on your iPad if you want. I personally think it's the best study purchase I've made and I'm really grateful that I'm able to have an iPad. And whilst I think it's truly enhanced the way that I study, I am aware that not everyone is able to get access to it as it is quite expensive. There are different versions of the iPad. You don't necessarily need the new iPad Pro to get the same benefits out of it. For example, there's a student version, you can get the iPad Air, or there's even other tablet devices like a Microsoft Surface that would still have similar benefits. The iPad is just my personal preference as I feel more comfortable with Apple devices, but by all means find what tablet works best for you and remember it's just a tool that can enhance your learning process. It's not the end all be all. But that my friends is everything I have for this video. If you enjoyed it, please do give it a thumbs up because it really supports my channel and also subscribe down below. Let me know in the comments what device or study technique has really transformed the way you study. I would love to know about the different ways you guys go about your learning process and what resources you swear by. And also, if you've made it to the end of this video, comment the word cactus just to confuse everyone else in the comments. Lol, okay. Thank you so much for watching and also for supporting my channel. I appreciate you guys so much. I'll see you in my next video. Bye.